Okay, and welcome back to students who are taking Math for Business and Finance and Math Applications. Um, we are working on the Chapter 6 Summary Practice Test, and we are now into the Word Problem section, which is begins on question number 13 here. Okay, now just as a quick FYI, um, it says solve for the following problems for portion, base, and rate. You're not going to hear me talk about the portion base rate when I'm working on any of these problems. You can find out why by looking at the first video in the word problem section. Um, so I'm just going to solve the problem the way I normally do. And it's just intuitive and it makes sense to me. Uh, and hopefully by watching me, it'll make sense to you. And you'll see that I'm not concerning myself with portion bases and rates. Uh, but I am arriving at the right answer. So let me work through them here. Okay. An Arby's franchise has a net income before taxes of $900,000. Right. So that's a net income before taxes of 900000 The company's treasurer, 900000 The company's treasurer estimates that 40% of the company's net income will go to federal and state taxes. So if this is my net income and 40% goes to federal and state taxes, how much will Arby's franchise have left? Okay, well, you can go about this two different ways. I mean, if I know that the net income is 900,000 and that represents 100 percent right remember here's 900,000 and that equates to 100 percent and if I take out 40 percent that means I have 60 percent left over okay so I have 60 percent left over now if I have 900,000 and I want 60 percent of that I just take the 900,000 and times it by 60% and that will give me 540,000 as my final answer. Okay. Now, I could have taken 40% of 900,000 and come up with 306 uh, yeah, 360,000 and then subtract the two to arrive at that answer. So there's more than one way to do this problem. But the important thing that I want to point out here is, remember I had, if you watch the uh, word problem videos, I had said, you know, here we have a numerical figure, whether it's a number, a decimal, whatever have you. It could be dollars, it could be an amount, it could be a quantity, whatever. And that has a relationship to the percentages. Okay. And that's what I want you to be able to see here. And notice I'm not talking about portion bases and rates. I'm just looking at the problem logically. Okay, I have 900,000 as my net income, and that's 100%. And again, if I'm if I'm told I have 40% of that, well, yeah, I can figure out the 40%, and that gets 360,000, and that means the remaining portion has to be 540. Okay, that's a visual representation of whatever I put here. Okay. So go back and watch the word videos, word problem videos, and you'll see more of my thinking along that line, but you'll see it as we go forward here. Okay, uh, number 14. Domino's projects a year-end income of 699000 The net income represents 30% of its annual sales. So if I have 699000 and that re represents 30% of its annual sales. Well, its annual sales has to be 100%, right? And if the 699,000 represents 30%, then the remainder has to be 70%. Okay, so now the question is asking, what are Domino's projected annual sales? Well, to get that, I take the 699,000 and I just divide by the 30 percent 
And when I do that math, I end up with uh, 2,330,000. Okay, so that's 2,330,000. And of course, if I subtract one from the other, minus 699, oops, 2330 minus 699, I end up with um, 1,631,000. Okay, so you know, the net income represents 30% of its annual sales, um, and so the remainder has to be 70%. And I could do the same thing. I could take 230, uh, uh, 1,631,000 and divide it by 70, and I'll 70%, and I'll get that number also. Okay. Number 15. Target ordered 400 iPods. When Target received the order. 100 iPods were missing. So if they ordered 400 and 100 were missing, okay, that means 300 showed up. What was the percent of the order? What percent of the order did Target receive? Well, if they received 300, we divide that by the 400, which is our total amount. That cancels, and we're left with three quarters. When you divide four into three, you find out that's 0 0.75, and that is you move the decimal places, so you end up with 75%. Okay, so the 400 is 100%, the 300 is 75%, and that makes the 100 25%. Okay, now. I could have done this a couple of other ways. I could have said, uh, well, I know 100 were missing, so let me calcul uh, calculate uh, the percentage for missing. To do that, I take 100 over, four, uh, over 400, and that would have given me 25%, and then I would have subtracted the 25% from the 100 in order to get to the 75. Okay. Um, you know, what I just did was the long way, okay? Uh, Mentally, I would have done it this way, okay? Because I know that I have 100, if I have 100 out of the 400, that's one quarter. And one quarter, we all know, is 25%. And the reciprocal, um, the opposite of that, would have been the 75%. And that would have been my answer. It, it would have taken me literally two seconds to do this problem, okay, once I had read it. But doing, you know, showing the math... You know, this is the pattern that you recognize, and if you do it enough times, um, you'll begin to, you know, see these things, and mentally, it, it just snaps in the place where you don't have to think about it, but you can't run before you can walk, so, um, you know, work through the problems like I do, and eventually you'll get to that point where it makes sense to you just intuitively. Okay, um, let's see here, 16. Matthew Song, an employee at Putnam Investments, receives an annual salary of 120000 Today, his boss informed him that he would receive a $3,200 raise. What percent, okay, what percent of his old salary is the $3,200 raise? Okay, so that's important. What percent of his old salary? So if I have, if he gets a $3,200 raise, I'm dividing it by the 120000 and if I do that math, I end up with, uh, so 3,200 divided by 120,000 gives me 0 0.0267. And I move the decimal place over 2, so I end up with 2.67%. Okay. Number 17. The price of a... Delta Airline ticket from Los Angeles to Boston increased to $440. This is a 15% increase. What was the old fare? Now, if you had seen my, um, you watched my previous videos in the word problems, um, you'll see me explain it just like this. It's saying, what was the old fare? So here's my old fare. 
and I don't know how much that is, but I I know that whatever my old fare that was 100%, and it's t the problem is telling me I'm increasing 15%, and when I increase that 15%, I get my new fare, okay, which is equal to $440 over here, okay. Now, and the old problem, and so to go from here to go from here to here that's and what to get the 440 that is hundred and fifteen percent okay 440 is a hundred and fifteen percent of the old fare so since I know it's 440 I could take the 440 and I divide that by the decimal equivalent of hundred fifteen percent okay I divide by hundred fifteen percent I divide because I don't know the old fare. Now, if I knew the old fare, okay, well, let me let me figure out the answer to this. So if I take 440 and I divide by 115%. So I'm taking 440 and I'm dividing it by 1.15. I get $382.50. Sixty-one cents. Okay, so this is three hundred and eighty-two dollars and sixty-one cents, which is my answer. But as I was saying, if you watched the other videos, if I know this amount and I know the increase, and I'm going this way, where I don't know the future amount, what I'm going to do is I want to multiply by whatever the increase is. If I know the future amount and I want to go this way in order to find out my old amount, okay, I want to divide by the percentage, okay? So solving this, you know, just go back and watch the other videos, but this is a quick thinking on how to, you know, why I'm dividing instead of multiplying for this problem. I'm dividing because I know the future amount and I want to all know the base amount or the old amount. Okay. Right. Let's see here. Yep. Two more problems. And I, I'm at 13 minutes, so let me try to clip these off. Okay. Scupper Grace earns a gross pay of 900 per week at Office Depot. Scupper's payroll deductions are 29%. What is Scupper's take home pay? So if you own, if, he earns 900 a week, and that's 100%. And his deductions are 29%. Okay, I can do this two ways. I can take, remember, there's a relationship here, dollars to percents. Okay, I could take 29% of 900 and get this figure, right? Whatever this figure is, and then I could subtract that from that to get my answer right here. Or I could subtract 29% from 100% because I know that 900 is 100%, and that would give me 71%. Right? So now I could take 900 and multiply that by uh, 71%. And if I do that, I end up with... Mm, which is the answer to my question. Okay. And normally I would be done if I'm relatively confident about that, but to double check, I can then subtract the 639 from the 900 and know that that's 261. So if I do do the math where I have 900 times the 29%, right, that should give me the 261. And I know that my figures are all correct. Last problem, Mia Wong is reviewing the total accounts receivable of Wong's department store. Credit customers paid 90,000 this month. This represents 60% of all receivables due. So it's 60% of all the receivables. If we know all the receivables is 100%, that means there's 40% um, that weren't paid. 
So what is Mia's total accounts receivable? Well, uh, that's simple. We take the 90,000 and we divide by the 60%. And if we divide by the 60%, we end up with 150,000. So that ends up being 150,000. And then, of course, if I subtract the two, I end up with 60,000. And you know, as a double, oops, not percent, 60,000. And as a double check, I could take the 150,000 and divide that by the 40%. I'm sorry, multiply that by the 40%. And multiply that by 40%, and that will give me that should give me 60,000. Okay, as your double check. But we're at 16 minutes, and real quick, always remember for these percentages, there is this relationship. Okay, back and forth. Now it can get you know more complicated than this, and in uh, future lessons or even in other subjects, you'll see it being more complicated. But as long as you remember this as the basis of your uh, the relationship, you shouldn't have any problems in working those uh, future problems. Okay, so that's it, and good luck to you with uh, you know your you know test work or whatever that you're going to be doing, and I'll see you in chapter seven.